Hello, ladies and gentlemen. The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to clone the Math Practice Repository and create your own branch if you have not already done so. First, locate the GitHub desktop icon on your computer. Double click it. You should have already signed into your account on this computer. If you have not, please sign in with the GitHub username and password that you created. Okay, in the top left hand corner, look for the file menu. Left click it one time and then click on clone repository. You can also use the keyboard shortcut control shift O. If you've signed into your account correctly and you've joined the MMS Jax group, under the GitHub tab, you should see some repositories that we have created, excuse me, that I have created. The one that we want to clone is the MMS Jax math practice. Left click on it. Um, if you need to change the path, you can. If you don't know what that means, you can just click clone. And then depending on how much data is there, it will take a minute or two to download completely. Once you have done this, you should see excuse me, current repository is listed as math practice. And then you should see an option for current branch in the middle. Left click the arrow one time. Uh, you'll see a list of branches that have already been created. If you have not created one, click on new branch. And then I would just reuse your username as the branch name, but you can use anything that you want as long as it is school appropriate. Click create branch. Then you should see the publish branch button. Left click that one time. If you don't receive an error in the next 30 seconds or so, you've done it correctly. If you do receive an error, please grab an ex a tech support ticket and wait for me to come assist you. Uh, again, this should be your actual username for GitHub or anything that's school appropriate. Uh, if you have any questions, grab a ticket and I will come and help you. Now that you've hopefully created your branch, the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to find the files on your computer. Uh, the shortcut for the keyboard is Control, Shift, and then F. That will open up the Windows Explorer to the um, location of the GitHub folder where all the files will be located. Uh, you can also click on, excuse me, left click on the repository menu and then click on the Show and Explorer option. Uh, go ahead and practice both of those because you always want to be able to locate the files quickly on your computer. Uh, will save you quite a bit of time when working with uh, GitHub. Okay, hopefully by now you've managed to create your branch, uh, publish it to GitHub, and all that is working correctly. Uh, next thing we're going to do is start working through the program. Uh, the first thing you need to do is open up Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Uh, you should have the icon pinned to your taskbar. Uh, if you don't, uh, look for it here on your desktop. Well, this is the icon. It may be in a different location. Uh, so go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. Uh, depending on the last time you used it, uh, you may have different things pop up uh, on the screen, uh, such as old files and things like that. Um, what we're going to do is click File in the top left corner. Uh, you can also use the keyboard shortcut Control N uh, to open a new file. Uh, the very thing, first thing that we're going to do with our code is write a comment. Uh, in Python, uh, if you see the little update pop up, just click later. Uh, there's no way for us to update it right now, so don't worry about it every time it pops up. Okay, uh, so we're going to make a comment. Uh, to make a comment in Python, you're going to use a hashtag symbol. Uh, this tells the computer that anything after this particular symbol, uh, just ignore it. It's just for the person uh, reading and writing the code. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, put our first name and last initial. Uh, what the program is going to do... Uh, the date that you wrote the code. Uh, if you want to get fancy, you can put the time that you made the update. Uh, and then you also want to put uh, the version number. For this one, put version 0, 0. All right, This is the very first uh, piece of the code that we have written. Next thing we're going to do is uh, save the file as a Python file. Click File, 
save as. Uh, the important thing here is to save this to your GitHub folder. For me, it's in my documents, GitHub, math practice, multiplying and dividing fractions folder. Yours might be different. Uh, again, to find it uh, from the GitHub app, click on repository, show in Explorer, or control shift F. It'll bring up the folder there. Um, for the file name, just put multiplying, dividing, fractions, and then just put 0, 0.0. Next thing you need to do uh, under the save as type, left click, and then find the uh, Python extension. Depending on the version of Visual Studio Code that you are using, uh, it may or may not show the .py here, but as long as you have Python selected, uh, it will save it as the correct file type. Go ahead and click Save. Uh, if you did it correctly, you should see uh, this first line of code uh, change color uh, depending on the theme that you've chosen for your Visual Studio code. Uh, if you have trouble with that, please let me know, and I will come around and help you by grabbing a ticket. Okay, uh, if you did this correctly, you should be able to click on your GitHub desktop app, and then you should see at least uh, one or more changes uh, on the repository. Uh, ideally, it should show you the name of the file here. Uh, on the right-hand side, you can see what you uh, added to your code. Uh, to commit it, first of all, uh, create a quick summary. All right, this should just be approximately 10 to 15 words that explains what you did with that code. So we created the first version of the program. Uh, yours does not have to be exactly the same thing, but it should have the same general idea. Uh, and then the description, you can usually write uh, one or two sentences for short updates, uh, and then sometimes paragraphs or more for larger updates. Um, again, you don't have to put exactly the same thing that I do, but uh, you know the general idea. Go ahead and click uh, Commit to your branch. Uh, you should see the push origin button appear, uh, and then go ahead and push origin. If you did it correctly, uh, over here on your history, uh, you should see uh, the file and then your update. Uh, if you have problems with that, please grab a ticket and I will come and help you with that section. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the next thing we're going to do is print some strings on the screen for the user of the program. Um, it's always important as a good programmer to write code that is easy to understand and that the person using it has little chance of doing something incorrectly. Uh, so you always want to print some instructions and kind of explain what your program is doing uh, as it's running. Um, in order to print something in Python, uh, use a command called print. Uh, it's going to be followed by a pair of parentheses. Uh, and then inside that parentheses will be the string uh, which you just learned about that you want to print on the screen. Um, again, it's going to be either single quotes or double quotes. Uh, I prefer double quotes. And that's just the way that I learned. Um, you can use either one. Just be consistent. Uh, so your first print statement on line three, uh, just print a short uh, example of what your program is doing. Uh, you can be serious or you can be funny as long as you explain what's going on. Uh, and then at the end, you're going to put, uh, it's called a, a new line character, where it's going to be a backslash, and then an N. Uh, and what that does is we'll, uh, it's the equivalent of pressing enter on the keyboard, uh, and it adds a new line of space uh, when the string finishes printing. Um, since we added something new uh, here on line three, all right, we're going to change our version number to 0.1. Uh, in our comment and then when we save it do file save as uh, and change our version here to 0 0.1 and then click save
switch back to GitHub Desktop. You should see a new change here. Add your summary. Uh, in this case, talk about adding your first print string. Click commit uh, and then push. If you have any errors at this step, please uh, grab a ticket and I will come assist you. Uh, the next step is going to be asking the user for their username. To do that, we're going to declare a variable. Uh, we're going to call it username, uh, and I like to use snake case. Then we're going to put something called the assignment operator. Uh, it's just a single equal sign, uh, and what it means is to <clears throat> make the variable on the left, in this case username, uh, equal to whatever data we give it on the right. Uh, in Python, there's a function called input that will uh, take input from the user and save it to that variable. Inside the input parentheses, you can put a string to add some additional instructions for the user that they'll be able to see. Uh, as you can see, uh, my string says, what is your name? And then it says, type your name and press enter. Uh, and again, we have the new line character. Uh, this is always good in order to, uh, again, uh, make your code easier to read. Uh, and then this part here in particular, which says, type your name and press enter. Uh, again, it explains the code and what you want to happen to the user. So it reduces the chances of them doing something incorrect. Um, after we do our input, uh, it's a good coding practice to always print the variable back to the screen uh, to make sure that it's been recorded correctly. Uh, so we're going to print the first part of our string, uh, and then after the quotation mark here, we're going to put a comma, the variable name. another comma, and then we're going to start another string. Right, just a couple of small formatting things here so that it's a little easier to read. Uh, so if our code is correct, we will see print uh, hello on fraction bot. Uh, we'll get to the username input here, and then on line five, uh, whatever I've typed, uh, for my username will print on the screen. So let's give that a test. Uh, we're going to right click and run Python file in terminal. All right, so we can he here we can see the first line. Uh, if I look at my second line, I can see that I forgot a bracket at the end. So I'll go back and add it to my code now. Uh, here you can see that the cursor is waiting for my input. I inputted my name and then it was able to successfully uh, print it back to the screen so that I know my uh, variable has been saved correctly. Um, if you have any questions, uh, grab a ticket for this section and I will come and help you. Um, looking back, uh, I want to change some of the formatting. As you can see, I have some extra spaces here, so I'm going to delete these extra spaces. Uh, run my code one more time. There, that looks a little better. Uh, so now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to change my version number again. Um, Generally, uh, version numbers after the decimal point here, uh, in this case the point 0.1 and point 0.2, are for small updates. Uh, which we've done here today. Uh, major updates uh, would be uh, the whole numbers here. Uh, so again, I'm going to save my file. and I want to change my file name to also match the version number uh, of my program. Um, it's just a way to keep it consistent and to track changes uh, as you build your programs. Okay. 
Uh, if we switch back to our GitHub desktop app, uh, we should see uh, any changes and updates. Uh, again, add your short summary. Uh, generally, it should be a, a one-sentence description uh, of what happened. And then for the description here, you can add more detail. Um, again, you don't have to put exactly what I put, but your uh, commit description should have the same general idea. Click on the commit button, click on the push button, and your uh, second version has been finished. Okay, uh, by now you should have uh, a few print commands working. And hopefully your, your username variable and the input command have worked correctly for you. Uh, you should be on version 0 0.2 of your multiplying and dividing fractions program right now. All right, uh, the next thing we're going to do on line 7 uh, is we want to explain exactly what we need for the program. Uh, in this case, we need to know... the numerator and denominator uh, for both fractions because obviously we're going to have uh, two fractions that we will multiply and divide together uh, with this program to start with. Uh, the next thing we want to do uh, on starting on line 9 uh, is we're going to declare the variables that we will use for our fractions. Uh, so we have a numerator and a denominator uh, for each fraction. Um, what we want to do is add some way to uh, specify what they are. Uh, so I always recommend using numbers on your variables, such as numerator 0, denominator 0, so that we know that those two variables here uh, are for one fraction. And then we can have numerator 1 and denominator 1 for our second fraction. Uh, if you want, you could also use numerator A and numerator B uh, as an example. Um, you are free to choose variable names that you want, but it should be obvious that the two different numerators and denominators uh, are for the separate fractions. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize those variables. Uh, to initialize a variable, it just means to give it a value to start with. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use that assignment operator, uh, a single equal sign. And then we're going to set each one of those variables equal to zero, just to start with. Uh, and then again, another good uh, coding practice to get into is always add comments to your code to kind of explain what you're doing. variables for fraction one. Uh, again, we've made a small update, so let's change it to version 0 0.3. Click File, Save As. Change it to 0 0.3 in the file name, and then click Save. Switch back over to GitHub. Add your summary and then a short description. Commit it, push it. Uh, and then again, if you have any trouble, please uh, grab a ticket and I'll come assist you with this part. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, as I said earlier, it's always a good coding practice to print variables back to the screen just to confirm that they're correct. Uh, and then if there are issues, there are ways to address it. 
Uh, if you've been following along with the video accurately, uh, you should have the variables for the first fraction uh, on lines nine and excuse me, ten and eleven. Um, if they're not on the same exact line, that's fine. Uh, but after you have declared uh, the first denominator, uh, press enter uh, twice and get some empty lines there. Okay. Uh, and then on line 12, what we're going to do is we're going to print those two uh, variables as a fraction uh, to see how it turns out. So again, we're going to have our print command. All right. We're going to start our string. All right. And then we can just put something to the effect of the first fraction is, spell it correctly. Um, after our first string closes, put a comma. All right. The variable name that we want to print, in this case, numerator zero. Put a second comma, start another string, all right, and then in this part of the string, we're just going to put uh, the fraction bar. Um, in this case, it's just a forward slash. Put another comma, all right, the variable for the first denominator, another comma, and then we're going to end our sentence with a period and a new line. Uh, if our code is correct, uh, it should print uh, the first fraction is, and then it should say 0 slash 0. Let's right click, run Python file and terminal. Type our username again, prints the username, and there it goes. It prints the first fraction there is 0 uh, over 0. Uh, if you notice, there's an extra space here at the end after the zero. Um, that's just some formatting that you can play around with, but the string works. Uh, go ahead and create uh, the same line, but for our second variable, excuse me, our second fraction here on line 17. Uh, an easy way to do that is just to copy and paste that first line. Uh, in this case, on a line 17, and then we can just change the two fraction numbers, All right, numerator 1 and denominator 1. Run it, make sure it works correctly. All right. <clears throat> uh, prints the first fraction, All right, and then it's, because it's, we copied and pasted that line, obviously we need to go back and change our code. Uh, but as we can see, it printed both fractions correctly. All right. Let's go ahead and update to version 0 0.4 and then save it. Do file, save as, change your version number to 0 0.4 in the file name, and then click save. Switch back over to GitHub. All right, for this summary, um, just put uh, version 0 0.4 for the summary. And then in the description, explain what we did. Uh, and again, uh, just, just say something that you decided to uh, write code to print the two fractions on the screen. Uh, click it. Click commit and then push origin. All right, now that we have our uh, variables declared and working correctly for our two fractions, uh, we want to add another step uh, of instructions for the user. So we're going to have another print command. Uh, put your two parentheses and then start your string. And we're going to explain how fractions are multiplied. Uh, and to do that, you multiply the two numerators together, uh, and then you multiply the two denominators together. Okay, uh, we're going to run it real fast to make sure our two uh, strings print correctly. Enter our username. There we have our first fraction and our second fraction, uh, and then we have the two instructions. All right. 
uh, on line 22, uh, if you're following along, we're going to have to declare a new variable for our new fraction. Uh, the easiest way to do that is to be new numerator and then new denominator. And then what we're going to do here, uh, again, we're going to use the assignment operator. And we want to make this new numerator variable equal to uh, the first numerator and the second numerator multiplied together. And we can do that by doing numerator 0. Uh, then the symbol for multiplication in Python uh, in most computer programming languages uh, is an asterisk. Uh, so hold shift 8 on uh, most keyboards. And then we're going to put numerator 1. And we'll do the same thing for the denominator. Again, uh, the name of the variable, in this case, the denominator 0 for my example, uh, the symbol for multiplication, and then denominator 1. Uh, if you are using Visual Studio Code, uh, once you have declared uh, certain variables, uh, it will have those variable names in memory, and sometimes you can use uh, the tab key to complete them. So we have our two new variables. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to reuse our line uh, from line 17, uh, in this case where we're printing the fraction. Uh, copy and paste it. Right. But we're going to change it from the second fraction to the new fraction. And then we need to change our two variables here. Put new numerator and then new denominator. Let's run our code again. Right. Username. Okay, as we can see, it prints the new fraction of 0.0. .0. Uh, if you've seen this, uh, hopefully you're realizing that we missed an important step of asking the user to input the new fraction information, uh, which we'll do in the next section of the video. Uh, for now, let's go ahead and update to version 0.5. Uh, file, save as, All right, change our code to version 0 0.5, and then click save again. Switch back over to our trusty GitHub desktop. Short description. Uh, again, uh, just mentioned something about adding the variables for the new fraction. Uh, and then in your actual description, you can be more specific. Commit, push origin. And then, uh, again, if you have trouble with this section, grab a ticket and I will come and assist you. And then next, we're going to move on to um, asking the user to input the fraction variables that we want to use, or excuse me, the fraction values. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, at this point, we should have uh, a working fraction multiplier. Um, the only thing that it does not do uh, right now is reduce our fractions. Uh, as you can see from our earlier example, uh, we ended up with a fraction of 8 over 24. Uh, which would reduce to uh, 1 over 3 or 1 third. Um, we're not going to worry about getting that fancy just yet, but eventually I would like to be able to review that with you. Uh, if you've been following along, uh, you should be on line 35 or line 36 of your code. Uh, whatever the next line is, I would like you to make a comment and indicate that this is where the division will start. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple hints. Uh, first of all, division in Python is done using the slash uh, operator. All right? It's a division operator. Uh, for example, we could make a variable called pi and assign it a value of 22 divided by 7. All right? We'll print our line just to, excuse me, print our pi just to see what it turns out. Okay, and then here we see our 22 divided by 7, which gives us the 3.14, uh, blah, 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 continuing on. 
Uh, the other hint that I'm going to give you is that we need to indicate that we're going to multiply by the reciprocal. So to divide, uh, like I said, you multiply by the reciprocal, uh, which means you're basically going to flip one of the fractions over where the denominator will become the numerator. Um, let's go ahead and update to version 0 0.7. Let's save our code. And then we'll make uh, our second to last GitHub commit. All right. If you've been following along with the video, uh, you should be on version 0 0.7. Uh, and then you should be able to do everything except for dividing your fractions. Uh, again, put a short summary starting to divide the fractions. All right, we'll commit it and then push it. Okay, uh, at this point, uh, I would like to see if you were able to figure out how to do the division on your own. Uh, when you make your next update, uh, first of all, uh, go ahead and remove the lines here uh, about pi. Uh, this was just an example to show you division. Um, and then make your next version uh, at least version 0 0.8. Okay, um, if you have any questions, please grab a ticket and I will do my best to assist you in class. All right, good luck.